our porch. Ain't that cute? We got Superman here and Batman and his sidekick Robin, the Green Lantern even. And what about you, young man? What about what? Who are you supposed to be? I'm Harvey Pekar. Pecker. Harvey Pekar. That doesn't sound like a superhero to me. I ain't no superhero lady. I'm just a kid from the neighborhood, all right? I'll forget this. Why does everybody have to be so stupid? pretty scholarly cat. He never got much of a formal education. For the most part, he's lived in shit neighborhoods, held shit jobs, and is now knee-deep into a disastrous second marriage. So if you're the kind of person looking for romance or escapism or some fantasy figure to save the day, guess what? You got the wrong movie. That's great. Okay, so now you got four pigs. You ought to be able to patch one together from there. <laughs> I think... Right? Let's go to the next one. All right. Hold on a second. Do you want some water or something? Ah, I got lots of orange. Do you like orange soda? Yeah, orange is all right. All right, so let's go to the next sequence. Did you actually read the script? No, a little bit. I, and I just, just to check the co construction, you know, of the, how the piece was constructed. I didn't read it word for word. Do you feel weird saying this stuff? <clears throat> no, I don't feel weird saying it. I don't know how long my voice is going to hold up, but... Doc, you got to help me, man. My old lady's dumping me because I can't talk. <laughs> she says I'm a social embarrassment. Now she's got a PhD. She's some hot shit academic star, and I'm nothing but a file clerk. You know, me being a file clerk was fine when I was signing the damn checks for a tuition, man. Harvey... Stop talking, please. An open line. I started worrying my voice had never come back, you know. Say, ah, uh, Mr. Picard. I mean, it's torture. I'm telling you. Ah. Uh. 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 
Hmm? What? Is that bad, Doc? It's not good. It's cancer. First I got marital problems, and now you're telling me I got throat cancer? For my sake, man. Harvey, calm down. It's not cancer. You have a nodule on your vocal cords, probably from screaming and yelling so much. And if you don't give it a rest, you're going to lose your voice completely. Okay, okay. okay. But how long? A few months. Months? Ah. This uh, plebeian lifestyle just isn't working for me anymore, okay? I gotta get out of here before I kill myself. Here's our man. Yeah, all right. Here's me. Well, the guy playing me anyway. Though he don't look nothing like me, but whatever. So it's a few months later, and I'm working my flunky file clerk gig at the VA hospital. My voice still ain't back yet. Thank you, Harvey, dear. Things seem like they can't get any worse. Philippine. Where the hell did you get that shit? The reeking herd. Shun the polluted flock. Live like that stoic bird. The eagle of the rock. Hey, Mr. Boats. You know what that means, son? Yep, it's uh it's from an Eleanor Hoyt Wiley poem. It means um excuse me. It means stay away from the crowds of common ordinary people and do your own thing. No. It means don't compromise yourself for women. Ain't gonna do you no good. Get away from them as soon as you can. Yeah, well, I ain't got no woman now, so I'm living like the stoic bird, man. It's the only way to live, son. Now, now, that fool there. Probably listening to that loud rock stuff. Junk. Junk is all junk. I don't know, you know, I mean. Rock music's got some good qualities. Uh, it isn't jazz or nothing, but you know. Say, when you gonna bring me in some of those good records? Some Nat King Cole with strings. I don't got any of that, Mr. Boats. Yeah, you got it. Yeah. You're keeping him at home, though. He won't turn loose the good stuff, he just sells the junk. <laughs> no, I, I just. I, you know, keep the stuff I want to keep. I don't, you know, I sold a lot of good material by people, you know, that he didn't like, you know. You know, Mr. Boats didn't like any blues or anything like that. And uh, he, he played classical violin. 
I started record collecting when I was 15 or 16 years old. I started getting interested in jazz. Prior to that, I had collected comic books. I was always a collector. I admit to having an obsessive compulsive quality in me. It's like the treasure of the Sierra Madre or something. You know, you go to thrift shops and you go to garage sales because you think you're going to find something that's, you know, real rare. And, you know, most of the time it's a total waste of time. But, but once in a while, you'll, you'll come up with something that will whet your appetite. <laughs> I was with some buddies at a junk sale looking for some choice sides when I met this shy retiring cat from Philadelphia named Bob Crump. You know the guy. Fritz the Cat, Mr. Nashville and all. They made a movie about him too. Oh, Jay McShan, man. Oh, uh, come on, Harv. You gonna buy that or what? Yeah, I don't know, Marty. It's got a lamination crack in it, you know? A quarter. Yeah, maybe I can talk it down. You are one she bastard, Harvey. Yeah, I know I'm tight, man. But I live in a government wage. You, you collect Jay McShann, man. Yeah, man, how about you? Yeah. But most of my records are back in Philly. <laughs> hey, Harvey, meet my buddy, Bob Crumb. He just moved to town. He's an artist for the American Greeting Card Company. Huh? That's cool. You should see his comics on. They're out of sight. Yeah? Hey, I'm at the comics myself. So Crumb showed me this comic book novel he was working on. A big yum yum book. I'd never seen anything like it. This is terrific. I really dig your work, man. This Peter Wheat book is by Walt Kelly. It's pretty rare. Oh, yeah? Can I get good bread for it? Not yet. Oh. Listen, man, let's get back to your book. What are you going to do with it? I haven't really thought about it. It's just an exercise. No, man, it's more than just an exercise. It's breaking ground, man. There's some wild shit in here, Bob. You're spitting on me, Harvey. Crumb and I hung out a lot back then. We had records and comics in common. Check it out, man. <laughs> Pretty scary. Yeah. You know, half of it, man. Eventually, people got hip to Crumb's artwork, and he started hanging out with a bohemian crowd. After a while, he got sick of greeting cards and moved away to San Francisco, where he got the whole underground comic scene off the ground. He'd come back to Cleveland every few years, and people would treat him like a celebrity. Give me my baby for some fire. Once he came to visit when I was feeling real bad. It was right after my wife left me. She got so mean to me at the end. And, and, and it ain't like I tried to keep her captive or anything like that, you know? I don't know, man. Mm. Yeah, but don't think I buy any of this growth crap, man. Everybody's always talking about how bad experiences cause you to grow and all that cliched stuff, man. And I had enough bad experiences and growth to last me plenty. Right now, I'd be glad to trade some growth for happiness. So how long you stayed in Cleveland, man? 
I don't know. I got to see this chick in New York, and I'm really busy with the comic book stuff. And it's good bread and all. I'm just getting sick of the whole scene. What are you talking about? You make a good living doing your art, right? Shh. How many guys get that lucky in their life, huh? Yeah, I... I... No, man, listen, I'll tell you something. People are starting to know the name Crumb. When you croak, man, you're gonna leave something behind. Yeah, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> it's not like I'm blind lemon Jefferson or Big Mama Thornton. Oh, come no. on, man. I'll tell you something. It sure beats working a gig like mine, being a nobody flunky and selling records on the side for a buck. Yeah, well, that's true. <laughs> Goyle. These glasses are six for two dollars because I couldn't carry twelve. But I wanted twelve. So today I'm buying six more. But you should only charge me a dollar fifty for that. It's all right. You can ask the manager. Frank, I need a price check. Man! Old Jewish ladies will argue forever with a cashier about anything. These glasses. You get behind them in line, and you're gonna wait forever, man. Because I couldn't wait for So today. I mean, I'm a yid myself, and women in my family are like that. But I never got used to it. I mean, I may be cheap, but I got limits, man. Let me explain one more time. These glasses are six for two dollars. <laughs> Wake up! But Your whole life's getting eaten away with this kind of crap. What kind of existence is this? Is this all a working stiff like you can expect? You gonna suffer in silence for the rest of your life, or are you gonna make a mark, huh? 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 Okay, I have the money right here. Even money, a dollar fifty. You don't even have to open the cash register. Even change and do.
since I read your stuff, man. I've been thinking I could write comic book stories that are different from anything that's being done. Mm -hmm. I figure, you know, the, the guys who are doing animal comics and uh, superhero stuff, they're really limited because they got to try to appeal to kids. And underground stuff like yours have been really subversive and it's opened things up politically, but there's still plenty more to be done with them too, you know? Pass the ketchup. <laughs> with words and pictures, it could be more of an art form. You know, like those, like those French movies are. Or, uh, with the sneak over in Italy. <sighs> so, anyway, I just, I tried, uh, I tried writing some stuff about real life, you know, stuff that, uh, the everyman's got to deal with. These are all about you? <sighs> yeah. Turn yourself into a comic hero. <laughs> <laughs> well, sort of, yeah, but you know, there's no idealized shit. You know, there's no phony bullshit. This is the real thing, man. You know, ordinary life is pretty complex stuff. <sighs> These are really good. So. Yeah, this is great stuff. I dig it. <laughs> Can I take him home and illustrate him? Oh. Wow, man! <coughs> you would really do that for me, man? <coughs> oh, man, that would be great because I can't even draw a straight line, Bob. Hey, what's up to your voice, Harv? All of a sudden, you sound fine. <coughs> I don't know, man. <laughs> I guess you cured me, man. She's about average. Average? Hey, man. Average is dumb. So I wonder if she's dumb. Well, I don't care. It's not my turn. Hey, man. Average is dumb. <laughs> How about that, man? That's all stories by yours, true. Hot off the press. That's huh? right, man. I, we have a regular Hemingway here. No way, man. I don't go in for any of that macho crap. I didn't know you could draw, Peacock. No, 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 no. I don't draw, Doc. I just, I write the stories. Harvey, am I in here? Yeah, Toby, you're in there, all right? Take it easy, for Christ's sake. Uh, buddy of mine, some of his friends, they do the artwork. It's really Let me say this. <laughs> Mr. Boats, it's not polite to grab things. Next time you Hmm. That's not bad. Son, you're done good. Mm. But you know, I was up in Toronto a few weeks back, and I saw the red Chinese ballet. Now, that was beautiful. The way those people were dancing together, those Chinese, they work hard. I tell you, they work hard. Where's everybody going?
Or are you stick to me in Russia enough to? I ain't going nowhere for now. Maybe not for a long time. But damn, if they're not rushing off to get there. So Harvey, uh, how do your co-workers and friends feel about you putting them in your comics? They love it. They can't get enough of it. They come up to me demanding to know why I'm not in the new issue. Most of them. What about overhearing what people say? Are you always listening at, at work? Were you listening on the riding the bus? Yeah, I listen. The supermarket. Yeah, I listen. I fall asleep on people too, but I listen some. Comics later. A brand new decade, same old bullshit. Yeah, sure, he gets lots of recognition for his writing now. Sure, his comics are praised by all the important media types telling people what to think. But so what? It's not like he makes a living at it like Bob Crumb. He can't go and quit his day job or nothing. Who am I kidding? Truth is, I'd be lost without my work routine. <laughs> oh, I got a job. Oh, I got a job. Hi, Harvey. Do you want these gourmet jelly beans? I gave up sweets for Lent. Yeah, sure, I'll take them. I recommend the pina coladas. They're excellent and very authentic tasting. It's watermelon. That's not it's pretty good, though. Wait till you try the pina coladas. Hey, Toe, tell me something. Can you eat uh, lentils during Lent? Sure, I don't see why not. You can't eat meat on certain days, but lentils should be acceptable any time. Yeah. You think there's any connection between lentils and Lent? I don't think so, but I'll ask Sister Mary Fred at church on Sunday. Sister Mary Fred, huh? She cute? Sounds kind of mannish, but who the hell am I to be picky? Harvey, you're funny. She's a nun. So what, man? And maybe she became a nun because she couldn't get a guy. Harvey, she became a nun because she had a higher calling. Higher calling? What a crock of shit. Man, you know, I don't even know why you bother praying anyway. I enjoy the ritual, and I'm a very spiritual person. You know, you should try believing in something bigger than yourself. It might cheer you up. What do we seem depressed, Toby? Bakery seems nice. Bakery seems nice. I don't know. Bakery seems. Bakery seems nice. 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 Bakery seems nice.
Not me, I have to put it in my mouth first. Loneliness can feel so bad. There had been times I felt lonely because a lot of times it was just me and my grandmother and I would just be sitting in my room all day watching television or reading books. That was before I bought a computer, of course. So how, how do you cope with loneliness, Harvey? Uh, did I say I watch television? Yeah, you mentioned you watch TV, you listen to your jazz records, you read, you write, you do your stick figures so you could plan, plan for your next comic book. Yeah. Because I've seen that's many of your it. stick figures, and that seems to be pretty interesting. Hmm. Yeah. Chocolate jelly beans. I'm going to have to try one. Go ahead. Crawlers, uh, jelly donut with a powdered sugar. Thank you. Thanks for coming. And, hey, you got me that uh, day old bread? I think so. Yeah. Here you go. Three dollars? Um, you're Harvey Picar. Yeah? Alice Quinn from school. Oh, yeah. Yeah, college. Yeah, yeah. And yeah, we had a couple of lit classes together. Yeah, what happened to you? I mean, you just disappeared after two semesters. Yeah, I know, man. Uh, and, you know, I got good grades and all, but there was that required math class, you know, hanging over my head. Eventually, the pressure got to be too much, so. Uh, <clears throat> uh, you're doing OK anyway. I mean, I heard all about your, your jazz reviews and your comics. You did? Sure. You're famous. <sighs> Meanwhile, I got my degree, and I'm, I'm just a plain old wife and mother. Oh. Yeah, well, uh... I'm not doing as great as you think. Uh, my second wife divorced me. I work a dead-end job as a file clerk, so... You know, sometimes I hang out with the guys in the corner, but most of the time I just stay at home by myself and I read. Well, you're luckier than you think. Between my husband and my kids, it's impossible for me to curl up with a good book. You know, I'm reading this book by Dreiser now. Uh, Jenny Gerhardt. That's one of my favorites. Yeah? You know... I hope that book don't end like uh, so many of those naturalist novels with someone, you know, getting crushed to earth by forces he can't control. Mm, I think you'll be pleasantly surprised. Yeah? I mean, it's certainly not your Hollywood happy ending, but it's pretty truthful, which is rare these days. Yeah. All right. Mm, this is me. Oh, all right. Nice car. Can I give you a lift somewhere? Uh, no, nah, that's all right. It's a nice day. I'll just, I'll walk. It was nice seeing you, Harvey. Yeah. finished reading Jenny Gerhardt. It was real good. That Alice was right. Sure, Lester, the main character, croaks in the end. But at least he's old and dies a natural, dignified death. 
I was more alone that weekend than any. Sometimes in my sleep, I'd feel a body next to me, like an amputee feels a phantom limb. All I did was think about Jenny Gerhardt and Alice Quinn and all the decades of people I have known. The more I thought, the more I felt like crying. Life seemed so sweet and so sad and so hard to let go of in the end. But hey, man, every day's a brand new deal, right? Just keep on working and something's bound to turn up. What happened to the new American Splendor? Uh, I think we sold them, babe. All of them? Yeah. Rand, I put one aside for myself next to the register. I haven't even had time to read it yet. Oh, sorry, Joyce. I didn't know you were such a Splendor fan. Next time, take it home. Well, maybe I'll call the publisher. That'll take so damn long. Shit! Why does everything in my life have to be such a complicated disaster? Okay. Well, maybe we can call someone. What is this? All right. Okay. I'm gonna hustle before the vibe in here gets any worse. You can just hang. Dear Mr. Picar. Greetings from the second smallest state in the Union. An endless plastics and nylon plantation controlled by giant chemical corporations. To make matters more dismal, there are no decent comic book stores in my town, which is why my partner and I opened one ourselves. Despite our steadily faltering business, my partner managed to sell the last copy of American Splendor number eight out from under me. I'm a big fan, and I hate to wait for a new order. Is there any way I can get it from you direct? Sincerely, Joyce Brabner. Yeah, she's got good looking handwriting. Dear Joyce, thanks for the left. Dear Joyce, thanks for the letter. What do you do besides selling comics? Um, anybody in the room ever done any creative writing of any sort? I'm a sometime activist, and I teach writing to prisoners. I try to help them build an interior life and make art out of their monotonous, suffocating routine. That sounds familiar. So you married or what? I'm divorced, thank God. Look, I think you and I got a lot in common, you know? How am I gonna get you to come visit me in Cleveland? Cleveland? Yeah. You think that's a good idea? Yeah, it's a great idea. You know, you should meet me because I'm a great guy. You know? Despite the way my comics read, I got a lot of redeeming characteristics. I don't know, where would I stay? I don't know, uh, with me. You know, don't worry, I'm not gonna put no moves on you. Or I'm not worried about that. Hold on, I just spilled my chamomile tea all over me. Yeah. So, what are you worried about, then? Well, it's the way, it's the way all the different artists draw you. What? You know, I don't really know what to expect. Sometimes you look like a younger Brando, uh, but then the way Crumb draws you, you look like a hairy ape with all these wavy, stinky lines undulating off your body. I, I don't really know what to expect. No, those are motion lines. I'm, I'm an active guy. Anyway, look, just come out here, and 
I will try to be anyone that you want me to be, okay? That's a dangerous offer. I'm a notorious performer. <laughs> Joyce? Hey, Harvey. Hey. So we finally meet in person. Hey. <clears throat> Look, before we get started with any of this, you might as well know right off the bat I had a vasectomy. you'd eat in a place like this. What, me? No, I've never been here. I don't know, I thought, I thought you'd like it. But obviously you don't, do you? It's fine, what difference does it make? I don't know, none, I guess. Maybe you a lot of meat on this menu. You're a vegetarian? Kinda, you know, I mean, ever since I got a pet cat, you know, I, I've had a lot of trouble eating animals. Hmm. I support and identify with groups like PETA, but unfortunately, I, I'm a self-diagnosed anemic. Uh-huh. Also, I have all these food allergies to vegetables, which give me serious intestinal distress. I guess I have a lot of borderline health disorders that limit me politically when it comes to eating. Wow, you're a, you're a sick woman. Not yet, but I expect to be. Everyone in my family has some sort of degenerative illness. Good evening. Look, you know, I, I was gonna clean up, but why should I give you any false notions? Well, the truth is, I got a serious problem with cleanliness. Oh, well, I could wash a dish ten times, it'd still be dirty. And they even uh, kicked me out of the army because I couldn't learn to make a bed. I've seen worse. Harvey, would you get me some water and a few aspirin? What, you got a headache? No, but I want to avoid one. Oh, yeah. Let me tell you something, Joyce. Sure is nice to have company. No, I mean... Despite all your problems, you seem like a great person. And hey, you know, I'm sorry if my dating skills are a little rusty. It's just, I, I've been to a hell and back with women. <laughs> that last one turned out to be a real nasty bitch. I had a nice time with you, too. <gasps> yeah? You had a nice time? Don't make people repeat themselves. That's annoying. Oh. Sorry. Come here. 
Which way is the bathroom? Uh, uh, to the kitchen and a right. Uh, oh. <coughs> Joyce. Uh. Hey. Joyce, what's wrong? What is it? Oh, I don't know. I think that yuppie food did me in. Uh. I feel terrible. <laughs> Let me at least do something for you. Uh, can, can I make you something? Hey, how about some chamomile tea? Chamomile tea? Yeah. What's a guy like you doing with that? I thought you drank soda pop for breakfast. I don't know. You know. Oh, I, I just noticed you drank a lot of it when we start talking on the phone. Uh, you know, the, the girl at the food co-op, she picked me out with all kinds of this herbal stuff. Man, one of these is good for stomach aches. Here, uh, Grandma Bear's tummy mix or something, I think. Hey, you still there? Hey. Harvey. I think we should skip the whole courtship thing and just get married. Man, am I glad I talked to you into coming up here. You know, any more time alone, I really, I really might have lost it. Mm, me too. You don't have any problems with moving to Cleveland? Not really. I find most American cities to be depressing in the same way. And you're okay with a vasectomy thing. Hey, Toby. No, you can't have any of my White Castle hamburgers, so please don't even ask. Yeah, can I have a fry? Okay, but just a couple, Harvey. I'm not going to be eating dinner until very late, and this has got to hold me over. Yeah, what do you got, church function? No, I'm driving to Toledo to see a movie. Would you like to come? Uh, nah, you know, I gotta, I gotta go to Delaware tonight. I'm getting married. Oh, yeah. why Delaware? Well, you know, the chick I'm marrying is uh, from Wilmington. You know, plus I gotta help her move her stuff back here. Why are you driving to Toledo to see a movie, Tub? It's not playing at the Maple Town. Okay. I didn't know you had a girlfriend hired me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We met last week. Tub, what movie could possibly be worth driving 260 miles round trip for? It's a new film called Revenge of the Nerds. Uh, it's about a group of nerd college students who are being picked on all the time by the jocks. So they decide to take revenge. Uh, so what you're saying is you identify with those nerds. Yes, I consider myself a nerd. And this movie has uplifted me. There's this one scene where a nerd grabs the microphone during a pep rally and announces that he is a nerd and that he is proud of it and stands up for the rights of other nerds. Right on. Then he asks all the kids at the pep rally who think they are nerds to come forward. So, <coughs> so nearly everyone in the place does. That's the way the movie ends. Uh, so the nerds won, huh? Yes. All right. Wow, well, you know, you got this movie and I'm getting hitched. We both had a good month, huh? Right. Yeah. Ugh. 
Harvey. Harvey, Harvey. What? Yeah? How long are you going to be in Delaware? Because I'd really like to see this movie with you. Yeah. I don't know, man. You know, I'm going to be gone like a week. But then, you know, I'm going to have a wife. So, you know, so I'm going to have to bring her along, too. Is it, uh, is it a girl flick? Depends on the girl. What kind of girl is your new bride? Is she a nerd? I don't know, man. Maybe, yeah. She's into herbal tea. I did end up becoming a character in his comics, and, you know, Harvey tends to push the negative or the sour, and uh, he can be very depressed, and therefore very depressing. So, Harvey, uh, do you think you portray Joyce fairly? Yeah, I think I portray her fairly. I, um, you yeah. You know, there's some things that she does that I don't put in there for, you know, obvious reasons, you know. I don't want to get my head cut off. But uh, I think it's my, my portrayal is generally fairly accurate. There have been stories that I've participated in or things that have happened, and I've seen them as... Uh a lot more happy things going on in them, and he just doesn't, won't put that in because he just doesn't think that uh, sunshine and flowers sell. Is that right? You say, always well, say, you always say misery loves company. And... Well, you know, I mean, I'm just a gloomy guy, that's all. Yeah. It's my perspective, gloom and doom. And see, I thought I was marrying somebody with a sense of humor. I guess I fooled you. What a crock of shit, man. That's just not the point. I think you missed the whole point of the movie. I like the team. Where the hell am I supposed to find a point? Garbage, Joyce. I agree with Toby. I think it's a story of hope and tolerance. Yes, it's about time that the people who get picked on get to be the heroes. It's an entertaining flick and all, and I can see why you like it, Toby. But those people on the screen ain't even supposed to be you, man. They're, they're college students who live with their parents in big houses in the suburbs. You know, they're, they're gonna get degrees, get good jobs, and they're gonna stop being nerds, man. I told you about loud talking. Use your inside voice, please. Look, Toby, the guys in that movie are not 28-year-old file clerks who live with their grandmother in an ethnic ghetto. All right, that's enough, They Harvey. didn't get their computers the way you did by trading a bunch of box tops in 49.50 at the supermarket, man. You're funny, Harvey. Getting in the front. Sure, Toby, fine. You go to the movies and daydream, but this Revenge of the Nerds ain't reality. It's Hollywood bullshit, Tob. Harvey, let him alone. The thing that I loved about it is I was transported to another time in my own life. I really like when they took the if video camera. If everyone cameras. in America could see this film, it's the same as the I Have a Dream speech, you know? Very empowering. Maybe I was being so harsh on Toby on account of my own problems. See, I wasn't even married a month, and my old lady was already showing signs of trouble. Granted, I tend to get married fast, because I'll take any woman that'll have me. But this time, I really met my match. Joyce. OK, how about these old 78s, Harvey? Can't you sell them to one of your collectors? Are you kidding me, man? No way. I ain't getting rid of my 78s. It's OK. Forget it, then. I give up. How can I make more storage space if you won't get rid of anything? You know what? I'll get rid of stuff, okay? It's just not my good stuff. Everything is your good stuff. How am I supposed to live here if there's no room for me? Come on, baby. I'll make room for you, okay? You just have to give me time. I'm not so good at these kinds of things. That's because you're obsessive compulsive. Oh, come on! I want to hear that psychobabble crap! If you don't want to hear it, you are the poster child for the DSM-3. Mm. I'll have you know I come from a very dysfunctional family, Harvey. I can spot a personality disorder miles away. Hello, Joyce. Is Harvey home? Borderline autistic. <laughs> are you listening to me? I tell you that Toby is a spy. Here 
paranoid personality disorder. Polymorphously perverse. of grandeur. See, I think comics can pretty much be an art form, man. I mean, the pictures can be as as good as they want to be, and the words can be as good as they want to be, and a man can do pretty much anything he wants to. That's true, Harvey, but I didn't come all the way from Delaware to talk about comics. If you think reading comics about your life seems strange, try watching a play about it. God only knows how I'll feel when I see this movie. Things were going pretty good for a change. Variety called me the blue collar Mark Twain, and Doubleday was interested in publishing an anthology of American Splendor. I hate checking bags, man. It always takes forever. The bus is gonna leave soon. That means I gotta shell out an extra 30 bucks for a cab, man. Hello, Andrew. Figures that lucky yuppie's gonna get in the bus in time. You know, vasectomies are reversible. Goddamn yuppies get everything, man. Are you listening to me? I said vasectomies are reversible. What? What are you talking about? I don't want no kids, and I came clean about my vasectomy the first time I set eyes on you. I know, but I think things have changed. I think we can be a family. Family? Right. What kind of family could we possibly be? I ain't no good with kids. Christ, I can barely take care of myself. I can take care of the kid and you. No way, Joyce. Forget it. I can't have no kids. I can't do it. Where the hell is that Ornette Coleman album? You know, I got a review due tomorrow. I didn't touch it, Harry. Would you please let me sleep? Come on, it's one o'clock. Come on. How late can a person sleep, man? Ouch. It happens to be Saturday, you selfish son of a bitch. That don't make no difference. And don't you tell me what to do. I'm not telling you what to do, for I'm the one sake. who moved into your city, into your home, into your vasectomy, into your whole screwed up life. The least you could do is allow me to live here in my own way. I tried everything, but nothing could get this woman out of bed. I mean, she wouldn't get a job, wouldn't go out, 
Wouldn't make friends. Nothing. Joyce. Joyce diagnosed herself as clinically depressed. I don't know what the hell she was going through, but it was sure taking its toll on me. Joyce, we got a message here. How come you didn't pack? Useless, man. Joyce finally got off the futon. you ease spill you do eat you blue then i won't still you do but eat you do eat you blue oh 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 lady be so good to me and if you ooh, huh? you do ooh, you cool, uh no then i won't oh, you do, you do, come on who the hell cares <laughs> oh, 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 that's me what the hell are you doing? I don't know. So good to me. Merchandising. And if you ooh, you do ooh, you cool, then I will. Gonna... Okay. People we'll like this show? Yeah. <clears throat> I can't believe my voice What's is going on. You were fine in the hotel. Know. Something to drink? Nah, I'm all right. I'm hungry, man. Aren't you hungry? In a barrel? Should give you donuts or something, you know. Look at this. Uh, Dave's ready for you now. Oh, hey. Oh, he is. Listen, you got something to eat? Cause my stomach is growling. Yeah, there's no time to eat now. Oh, oh come on, man. Oh, but wait, wait, wait. What, what? about uh, what about the dog? <sighs> He's got it at the desk. Okay. Will you relax okay. about guys, that already? Guys, we're in a hurry. Here. Okay, man. Which way? Uh, our next guest tonight works as a file clerk at a Cleveland hospital. He also writes comic books which deal with his day-to-day -day pains and pleasures. And this is an anthology of the nine of those comics. It's entitled American Splendor. From off the streets of Cleveland, folks, please say hello to Harvey Picar. Harvey, come out here. Hi, Harvey. You have to come around here. Good. Have a seat. Uh, what do you mean calling me curious, you know? I mean, I met you before the show, you know, and, uh... I meant curious yeah, yeah, in, in a know. fascinating way. Oh, all right. A man who oh, has, has has the presence of one who is quite fascinating. Okay, because I met you before the show. I thought you were know, a pretty nice guy, you know, and... Yeah, well, I think I thought, you're... Man, you know, like, you might, I might be uh, nursing a viper in my pussy. <laughs> no. you know, something like that. You're a little Get defensive that, about this, huh? Yeah, yeah, man. Okay. I'm waiting for those Cleveland jokes, you know? Go ahead. All right, settle down, Harvey. Yeah, all right. I'm settle down. <laughs> now, uh... Now, let's, let's explain to folks who may not be familiar with your work what it is you do here exactly. You have uh, comic books about you in your right. daily life, and, and you also have a regular job in Cleveland working at a hospital. That's, that's right. Yeah. That's right. But you know this guy. Harvey, that, uh, I'm beginning to wonder. To, you could probably get by on what you make selling your, your work, because I know people are after you to write other things, and you're, you're publishing this what anthology. Do you mean, what, who, what people? What people? What are you talking about? Well, I, I, know that, get that stuff. I know that you... <laughs> <laughs> you, uh, <laughs> you know that uh, I'm no showbiz phony. I'm telling the truth. Now you, Go on, man. Now you can't. Well, at least he's keeping up with Litterman. Pandering is more like. You, you mean to tell me that other people haven't contacted you about writing literary?
Well, I mean, you know, like a you can make a living as a writer. What are you trying what are you to do over there? How do you know all that stuff? I can't. I'm trying to get some news. There's a big story about to break about the U.S. selling arms to Iran and the Contras. Relax, relax. All right, don't worry about it. No, find me something good. Watch this. I just, I want to. I got a job. I'm trying to. I know you've got a job. I've got a job. We're both very lucky. We both have jobs. What's the matter? Okay. You gotta, you gotta go. Now, not just for, Harvey, I like you. I'm on your side. All right, I, I enjoy the comic books. Okay. And, and here, quickly, tell us about the little doll. Here. My wife made it. You're okay. And they're, and they're. Uh... What am I? Am I giving you a hard time? No, you're not giving me a hard time. Well, we, no, you're not making me nervous. We have to go now. And I just All wanted right. to mention that these are for sale. Yeah. They're made out of your old clothing. That's right. Yeah. And what, what do these go for? Thirty-four bucks. Thirty-four dollars. Thirty-four dollars for this? What are you cheap? You're cheaper than me. Would you pay thirty-four dollars for that? No, but I'm not asking it. My wife is. Oh, know? I see. Such brilliant repartee. Probably an ugly thing to have said about your delightful island there, but so what do you think? That's what I get paid for. <laughs> uh, it's not. Megalomaniac. Okay, I'm sorry. Hi, this is a message for Harvey Picard. <laughs> From the streets of Cleveland, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome back the one, the only Harvey Picard. Harvey, come on out, buddy. It became clear pretty fast that I was invited on the show just for laughs. Hey, you look like a lot of guys you see sleeping on buses. <laughs> Sorry. It's all right, Dave. Have a good time. I know. We're doing what we can. It's all right. your world. I'm just living in it. Well, what the hell did I care? Letterman was an okay guy. Let him take pot shots at me so long as I got paid Harvey, and I got to plug my here, comics. I'm myself, you look like every police what, artist what is, sketch what? I've ever seen. <laughs> this is... Funny thing is, something about me and Letterman clicked for the viewers. He kept wanting me back. Yeah. You know, Harvey, it was about a year ago this month. That's right. Almost no, it was, was last it, month. Dave. A year ago last month that you yeah. made your first appearance right. on the show. Right. What has happened to you since? Have we Not been able to? <laughs> It's slow going. I still have the same job. But see, Harvey, you're the embodiment of the American dream. And it wasn't just me getting all the attention. Action! And he's free. As a result of my appearances on Letterman, my buddy Toby Radloff landed a gig extolling the virtues of MTV. Hey, yo, yo, watch where you're going. Fucking hey, Travis, who the fuck is this on my set? Look at this. Man of the hour. This is my new dude for the MTV generation. We came upon Toby Radloff while doing a story in Cleveland last year on his friend, the comic artist Harvey Picar. Toby's a genuine nerd, and he doesn't care if you have a problem with that. Hi, my name is Toby Radloff, the genuine nerd from Cleveland, Ohio. And as you know, many hip people, including a lot of college students, are going to be heading for spring break. But I have decided to spend my own personal spring break right here in beautiful Cleveland, Ohio. That day, I had an epiphany. It seemed that real, salt-of-the-earth people like Toby and me were getting co-opted by these huge corporations. We were getting held up and ridiculed as losers in the system. This is Toby Radloff, the genuine spring break party nerd, signing off. <laughs> what can I say? It was the 80s, man. Harvey, you listen to me? I've been reading about these kids who grew up in these war zones, you know, Palestinians, Israelis, uh, uh, El Salvadorians, Cambodians. And these kids are amazing. You're They're coping. You're the Letterman show, right? Yeah, that's me. That's so excellent. You and stupid Petrix are a riot. Oh, yeah? Then how about you buy one of my comics, man? It's the only reason I go on that dumb show anyway. Right, sure. Later, Harvey Picar. 
So anyway, I want to write a political comic book about these kids. There's a, listen to me, there's a conference in Jerusalem in a couple of weeks. I'm going to start by doing some interviews whoa, 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 whoa. there. Whoa, 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 Wait a minute, what are you talking about, Jerusalem? Lately, I can barely drag you off the futon to go with me to the Letterman show. <sighs> Jerusalem. Do you want to know why? Yeah. Because I don't give a damn about the Letterman show. I want to do something important to me, something that matters. Hey, you know I only go on the show for the extra bread. You know, maybe if you got your lazy ass up and got yourself a job, I could do something that matters too. Harvey, you're yelling. You ever think of that? Don't. I'm sorry. Joyce, I'm sorry. I guess it was good to finally see Joyce excited about something of her own. This is crazy, you know? Can't you just do something here in Cleveland? Harvey, you'll survive a couple of weeks by yourself. Careful out there, right? I love you, man. Sure, I was happy for her, but I was still upset for me. It was later that night when I first found the lump. I was determined to put it out of my mind until Joyce got back. Easier said than done. What do I care? Just give me the chart already. What is your problem today? Miguel, look, I just don't want to keep coming back here for it, okay? Harvey, that patient's due to be admitted a week from now. Why do you always have to go through the same shit? How many times we gotta go through the same shit, man? Just give me the fucking chart! We'll see what the doctor has to say about this. Fine! What? I was starting to lose it. Between the lump, the loneliness, I felt like everything was closing in on me. And with Joyce over there saving the world, I never felt more like a sellout hack in my life. Okay. You know, folks, if it really is true that misery loves company, our next guest must always have a house full of people. <laughs> Okay, that's all. You can read all about his misery in the latest that, one, man. comic book entitled American Splendor. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome back Harvey Keaton. Harvey, 
This is not the forum. This is not meet the press. You just want me to talk about simple-minded bullshit, David. <laughs> but I ain't co-opted like you. Man. Oh, I relax, got I want to say, man. For instance, like I want to talk about a conflict of interest situation. Hartley. Can we do that, David? How about that? You know, like GE owning this network, NBC. GE has basically become a military, industrial, financial. Can we get the singing Shih Tzu back out here, Larry? Now, you has think he that left NBC the building yet? Is going to cover what they do fairly. That's funny, Dave. Harvey. I got other things I want to talk about, though. That's enough, Just Harvey. shut up, man. Don't push me, man. I'm doing my own thing. Harvey. Right? This is not... Are you afraid of the truth, David? It's not about is that what, what you're is? saying, Harvey. The truth it's about will set your you choice, choice David. of venue. It may come as a shock to you, but this yeah. is a comedy oh, show. Not tonight, it ain't, okay? Yeah. Let's, let's mix it up oh, a little bit. Let's say you can take your winning then? personality, go out and get your own show. I don't want my own goddamn because show. Because it seems to me we've had you on this show many, many times. You all can complain and promote your comic book. And you really haven't been very appreciative. You know, you didn't do me any favors, Dave, okay? Harvey. I'm still a file clerk. No, I have always been a file That's clerk. Enough, and Harvey. it's no thanks to you or to your goddamn pathetic audience, man. Okay, yeah. we're going to take a commercial, and when we come back, guess who's not going to be here? You want me to leave, David? Come on, ask me like a man, David. Don't, don't hide it behind a commercial, Are things man. okay at home, Harvey? Yeah. Things are just great at home, Dave, okay? Goodbye, Dave. Goodbye, America. Thanks for nothing, man. Harvey Pekar, ladies and gentlemen. We'll be right back. <laughs> I guess you really did it this time, yeah, huh? Who the hell cares? <laughs> oh, that show wouldn't help on my sales mm -hmm. anyway. If you met those kids over there and you saw what they went through, you wouldn't ask that of I'm me. I'm telling you something. If you go away again, I'm gonna lose it. Harvey, this is not up for discussion. I need this in my life right now. I do appreciate the fact that you missed me so much, baby. Hmm? Harvey, what is that? I don't understand. Does tumor mean the same thing as cancer? We know the growth is malignant. What we don't know is how far it may have spread. Once we have the results, we can make more informed decisions about treatment. Decisions about treatment. Cats, 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 diagnosis, cats, 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 How can I have cancer? I don't feel sick at all. Well, that's a positive thing. My cousin Norman died of lymphoma. He was 29. <laughs> he was a brilliant oncologist. Stop it. You're not gonna die, Harvey. You're not. What's gonna happen to you, baby? Who's gonna take care of you if Harvey, I'm not around? Harvey, look at me in focus. We are going to get through this. I understand illness. I know how to handle these things. Yeah, but that's... You, you know, I'm not strong enough. I don't know how to be positive. I can't do that. I can't do it. Yes, you can. No, I yes, can't. Can. I'll tell you how. You'll make a comic book of the whole thing. You'll document every detail. And that... That way you'll remove yourself from the experience until it's over. I can't do that. I'm just not strong enough. Man, I just want to die. That's fine. I'll do it without you.
friend. You called me about the comic book? Right, the artist. Uh, come in. This is uh, my daughter, Danielle. Had to bring her along. I hope you don't mind. Well, hi, Danielle. What's that you're holding? A pony. A pony? What's his name? She's a girl, Clarissa. Oh, I see. Well, I'm Joyce, and I'm very pleased to meet both you and Clarissa. Hey, I'm uh, real sorry to hear about Harvey. Is he here? No, he's going to work until next week when he starts the chemo. But that's why I want to get this project started, because once he's stuck here, I know he'll take over. Keys again, Joyce. Hold the door, hold the door. said, you know, we try to just follow you through your treatments. She thought it was a good idea, too, didn't she? Right, well, but here's some of the some of the ideas we've been batting around. I mean... <sighs> Jesus. We... <sighs> Joyce has no idea what she's doing, man. There's too many words in these frames. When are you coming back, Fred? Uh, actually, she said something about next Tuesday, which uh, is it's fine with me. It's just, uh, only thing is, uh, I might have the kid again. Uh, my ex-wife is supposed to take her, but I, I don't have much faith in her showing up. So she's, uh, she's in more shape than me these days, so. Huh? <laughs> next week, my, uh... My treatment begins. Do me a favor, man. Bring the kid with you. Okay.
Joyce. Joyce. What? What's wrong, Harvey? What are you doing up? <coughs> what is it? Tell me the truth. Am I... Am I a guy who writes about himself? In a comic book? Or am I just... Am I just a character in that book? What are you talking about? What are you, what are you saying? If I die, will that character keep going? Or will he just fade away? Harvey. 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 Oh my God. Harvey, wake up. Wake up, Harvey. Come on. Harvey. My name is Harvey P. Carr. Oh, that's an unusual name, Harvey P. Carr. 1960 was the year I got my first apartment and my first phone book. Now imagine my surprise when I looked up my name and saw that in addition to me, another Harvey P. Carr was listed. Now, I was listed as Harvey L. P. Carr. My middle name is Lawrence. And he was listed as Harvey P. Carr. Therefore, his was a, was a pure listing. Then in the 70s, I noticed that a third Harvey P. Carr was listed in the phone book. Now, this filled me with curiosity. How could it be three people with such an unusual name in the world, let alone in one city? Then, one day, a person I work with expressed her sympathy to me concerning what she thought was the death of my father. And she pointed out an obituary notice in the newspaper for a man named Harvey Picar. And one of his sons was named Harvey. These were the other Harvey P. cars. And six months later, Harvey P. Carr Jr. died. Although I'd met neither man, I was filled with sadness. What were they like, I thought. It seemed our lives had been linked in some indefinable way. But the story does not end there. For two years later, another Harvey P. Carr appeared in the phone book. Who are these people? Where did they come from? What did they do? What's in a name? Who is Harvey P. Carr? You know, we've got the t-shirts for sale upstairs if you're interested. Yeah, come on. Here's our man. A year later. No. Somehow I made it through the treatments, and the doctors are optimistic. Quite a year. Quite a year. I guess Joyce was right about doing a big comic book. We published the thing as a graphic novel, our first collaboration, and ended up with rave reviews. We even won a couple of national book awards. Go figure. Bye. Joyce. 
What is it, Harvey? I was a doctor. He says I'm all clear. My illness was Danielle. With a real mother running around who knows where and seeing how well her and Joyce got on, Fred decided she'd have a better life with us. I was scared at first, but then I thought, what the hell? She's a good kid. So we ended up taking her and raising her as our own. You keep reading them backwards. I like reading them backwards. Is that one you? I keep telling you, all of them's me, man. You look like a monster. Yeah, well, you know, well, you see what you're gonna look like. Me? Yep, you're part of story two now. What story? A story of my life. Oh. Um. Yeah, I know I'm not as interesting as the Little Mermaid and all that all that magical crap. I think I'm gonna write my own comic. Oh yeah, what about? I'm not sure yet, but not about you. I think you have enough already. You know, you should write about things in your own life. You know, like school and, uh, ponies, you know, I don't know, uh, girl stuff. Do you have to hold my hand? What, are you embarrassed of me? I know, I know, I know, I'm embarrassing. I felt the same way about my father. No, Harvey, it's just when you hold my hand, you squeeze it too hard. Joyce is right. You are obsessive compulsive. <laughs> Go on. So I guess comics brought me a lot. But don't think this is some sunny, happy ending. Every day is still a major struggle. Joyce and I fight like crazy, and she barely works. The kid's got ADD and is a real handful. My life is total chaos. With a little luck, I'll get a window of good health between retiring and dying. The golden years, right? Who knows? Between my pension and the chunk of change I get for this film, I should be able to swing something. Sure, I'll lose the war eventually, but the goal is to win a few skirmishes along the way, right? Jolly good fellow, for he's a jolly good fellow, which nobody can deny.
change again You seem to hurt me more and more Each hurt makes my love stronger than before I know flowers can go through rain But how can love go through pain that peculiar You tell me lies it should be obvious to me I've been so much in love with you till I designed to make me blue It's such a shame my love makes all your lies seem true And if truth makes love last longer Why do lies make my love strong? cry so much you do everything that they say but unlike a child my tears don't get my way I know love can last through tears but how can love last through years 